Alright guys, and welcome to today's video. It's a brand new video. Hope you're all doing well wherever you are, whether it's morning, night, or day, wherever in the world you are. Thanks for joining us. Today we're doing another one of our very special Look What's In That Shed videos, because in Ireland, there's a lot of JDM enthusiasts, and we generally, we've been around the scene now for like 10 years, and we still haven't found all the hidden gems around the country. We got a call from one of our friends who said that there's a group of guys in the middle of the countryside who have a car dealership and they have a ton of JDM cars. They didn't say what they have, we don't know what they have. No pictures, no nothing. Message the guys, say come down, check it out. We've got a couple of different sheds with a couple of different cars in them. So you're along for the ride with us and I'm pretty sure that the guy that told me to come here, he doesn't really over exaggerate. So he said, you're gonna be impressed. So we're gonna head inside, meet Richie and see what he's got. So this is Richie. Yeah. How Hello. You nice to meet you. This is John. Yeah. Yes. And these two men have taken. Yeah. I think they're happy to take a little bit of time off work. Yeah. To show us sure. around <laughs> some of the cars you've had. So you have yeah. a lot of different JDM stuff. Your JDM yeah. fans. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And you've been doing it a long time. So it's not like. Yeah. Probably all our lives, really. And one thing that you seem to have done, or I've been told that you did, rather than what I did, was you didn't sell a whole lot. You kind no, of. No. I kind of kept most of the stuff because. Clever I just, man. Yeah. Well, it was so, I liked them so much, it wasn't really about getting rid of them or anything, so... Um, so I, what, what it might look like, because you obviously bought a lot of these cars when they weren't inflated in prices exactly, like yeah. they are now, yeah. so to you it's strange probably what they're selling, or oh, maybe... Man, yeah. I never thought they'd buy that kind of money, but sure. Maybe but, it's tempting now even as well, because everything's gone yeah, too... Yeah, that's it too, but I just, I like them so much, it's just yeah. hard to... So you guys have them scattered around lots of different yeah. sheds and units, so exactly. we have no idea, so we're just going to wander yeah. around after you, and you... Yeah. Will, Some okay. of them are projects now, and in the process. So. We love projects. three GTST. So this was my first Skyline. I got this in 2006. Jeez, that is a long time ago. That's where I ended up. It was a bog standard car and I got it and uh, ended up just over the years modifying it and doing this, that and the other. And so this is the car that got you into it? This is the one yeah, that kind of started yeah. it all? Yeah, so it was um, just but Gran Turismo really and then... That's where it all started for a lot of us. Yeah, exactly. And just always uh, raced again with a white GTS or GTR. So. Talk us through what's been done. It's got a very big spoiler. I don't think I've ever seen that spoiler on a GTC yeah. before. So that's a John, John spoiler. So basically, most of the kit, except for the back bumper, is a BN back bumper, but the skirts, the, the spoiler, um, they're John. So have you ever seen yeah, yeah. Jeremy Clarkson in the yellow R33? So this is genuine June stuff from Japan? Yeah, that's a John spoiler, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And you know what's funny? This would have kind of been in style, then gone out of style, and, and now it's way back in style again, which is amazing. Well, I actually finished it for, for Jack Fest. So. Which we were just at, you'll have seen in our previous yeah. video. It was exactly. very warm. Good job you undersealed it. <laughs> I'd say, if you brought it to that Jack Fest and didn't underseal it, it might still be there in the paddock, because it was exactly. wet. And it has the, the GTR quarter panels on it as well. What does too? Yes, because we kind of built it around the wheels. I get you. That's yeah. what I've done the same myself yeah. quite a few times. I buy the wheels and then go, right, yeah. I need to modify the body. Exactly. That's really nice. Nice job. Yeah. And that, I'm, is this a cherry? No, it's not. This is, that's in... Or I guess it? It's not a KE. It is KE, Is it KE? Yeah, KE 35. 35? Yeah. I don't think I've ever... 1977. I've never seen a 35. This is so. a very unusual car. So this is like a KE Coupe. Bef yeah. But it's before... Yeah, they kind of call them the pillarless coupe because yeah. the two windows just giant oh, yes. and all pillar. So there you go. This is pillarless coupe, like the old marks. Looks very clean. So I ended up then have all the standard stuff for it, but I just said I go a bit more power, and we, yeah, I ended up getting a 20 valve crawl engine, and I'm still going to run it on the Link ECU and Loom. So 
kind of in the process so but this car is like super light so you put yeah. a 20 valve on independent throttle bodies yeah. in this it'll be quick yeah it's actually hard to hard to get for it i can imagine um like it's all kind of uh thailand is where you get all the bits for it like i know these, yeah they're like, they're big and they're into them in thailand and they're old so like it's like i'm going to put the chain on it probably, oh yes something like this i'll have probably i'm debating whether to go black bumper or chrome bumper i don't know but um we'll see when it comes to it it's not your favourite upgrade too, Josh. I've seen the, see the, the, there. the spiders. Yeah. Do you want to just turn on the window? Nope. No. <laughs> and then yeah. over here I could see yeah, so a very nice yeah. Evo. This is an Evo 8 with a um, 9 front on it. I always said that the best thing about the 7, 8 and 9 was each of them came with things that I liked most and then you could yeah. just put them all on the oh, same nice. car. So the 9 I think has the best front in my yeah. opinion. A lot of these now have suffered a lot from rust. Because for some reason, I had an Evo 7 RS and it was, this is 10 years ago, it was rusting yeah. then. And I was like, they're not the best, but this one is really clean. Yeah. And it looks great, all the mods are perfect on it. And so we're taking it to the next destination. The next destination. This is like yeah. a little magical it's a uh, journey. It's a bit of a maze. I think what we'll start with is the Starlets because we're kind of moving up in the power as we go along. Yeah, exactly, yeah. This one's probably a doer upper. Yeah, this one was bought for parts. You could just get 1200 euros for it or something back then. Yep. And uh, look, it's actually, it looks bad, but it actually drives like new. And there's, it's actually a good car. If it got a repaint, it'd be a sad we, we, we just recently got an RX-7 as yeah. a parts car for another one and turned yeah, it, it did actually turned out to be better than the one we bought it for. So yeah. I understand that they might look a little rough around the edges on the outside, but they can actually look very yeah, nice. Exactly, and, yeah. and then this is like a wow, yeah. standard. So seen it come up on Dundee, I think, 2016 or that. It wasn't, it wasn't expensive and it was very clean. I think I've seen many left alone. Yeah. Because it's funny how, again, this would have been uncool to have a standard Glanza and yeah, now yeah. it's kind of coming back around. Yeah, so it's, it's coming back like, you know, this one now is a little bit more modified. Yeah, so this one then, I bought, I, this was my first car, and I got it in 2004. It's, it's never gave a day's trouble. Tell you what, my first car, I'm pretty sure yours as well, Josh, didn't age this well in 20 years. Yeah. No. Like 20 years later, the car is still cool. Still cool. And my Fiat years. Punto now on the other What's hand. What's the longest you've owned a car? As long as I've owned a car? Not 20, well, <laughs> 20, 20 months would be a long time for me. I can't distract myself anymore from it. I know this car because I've seen it. It was at old school, new school this year. And, I, and I'll be honest with you on GTRs. Sometimes you kind of see one, you see them all. And then I actually stopped and looked at it. And it was all the little mods you'd done were just so well chosen. Like that's what I say. Because obviously the little bits of carbon here and there. I, was, I said this in another video, but like even just the little carbon trims. It's not enough that it's over the top, but it's enough. And I couldn't get over the condition. There's not a mark on it, not a scrape, not a scuff. Yeah. There's not one mod that you'd go, ooh, don't yeah, know about no, that. And everything he's replaced, he's replaced it with carbon. Yeah. Even yeah. like the brake, like there's not even wear on the brake calipers <laughs> on the car. Like, yeah. It's spotless. Yeah. That thing is amazing. Yeah. And then we got some JZXs. Yeah. A Mark II and a Chaser, I'm getting better at this. Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. So these are friends cars, your cars? No, the younger brother has these two. Yeah. So he's starting now on. Yeah, he loves these. Yeah. And he, yeah, he has this one. This is Mark II. Yeah. And it's running. It's Mark now. It's running 420 brake with Tommy Torball. This one here used to be John's car. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah. For what, what year did you get that? Yeah, 09, that was. 09, 2009. Yeah. That's actually yeah. probably one of the first years. Yeah, in the 06 or 07 coming into the country. Yeah. Yeah. So it would have been like. Yeah. So like 10 years old at that point. Yeah. Pretty that's fresh. It, yeah. yeah. So and uh, that's running big power enough. Yeah, just it? over 400. Just, sorry, no, around the 380. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of the yeah. right power for us, to be honest. Just yeah. right, it's yeah. enough to be quick, but also yeah, reliable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like, what, what kit is on this? It's like a 
So the origin, the origin, the origin, yeah. yeah. origin of um, yeah. That's very cool. So you guys, this is like a hobby, but also yeah. kind of a passion yeah. in the background yeah. as yeah, well. Yeah, so at the weekends and that, like when you were going out or whatever, you'd be just tipping away at different projects and get them right and change it something when doing this, that and the other. So We are in the same, but we, we understand more than most. <laughs> yeah, we we understand the misery exactly. that probably yeah. you sit them all and everyone goes, wow. Yeah. And then you're going, she's I remember that car did this and that car did that. And this was a headache and that was yeah. misery. But when they're all sitting together and they look so good, oh, it's brilliant. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You guys say you have some more? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some more, a few yeah. more. <laughs> oh yeah. So this yeah. is a few more. So let's go check them out. Yeah. So anything about it. So um, the younger brother bought it off me then about two years ago. So he's going to he's going to refurb. He's going to refurb it and get repainted. It's a bit of rust around the arches and stuff like that. The usual spots, but but you know, even it's done. Like if you go yeah, past, they're, they're worth doing now. Yeah, you know, because a lot of people would have got to a point with them where they were like, ah, can't be bothered. But now there's such value in them. This like you could say there's a bit of rust here and there. They all yeah. kind of have that yeah. if they have been restored. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When it's done and you put a few, few quid into it, it is yeah. worth the money and there's none left. Like there's you can't I said in Ireland, I don't know if it's the same for people watching in from around the world. It's very difficult now to go, I want an R33 Skyline, where do I go get one? And is that an Opel That's an Opel GT, yeah. I was just about to say, I don't think I've God, I can't remember the last time I've seen one of them. These to me, funnily from the front, are very like Toyota 2000 GT. Yeah, similar, very, similar, yeah. very similar shape. It's like they were all kind of copying each other's homework at the time. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. this is a this is a very bizarre. It's a bizarre car because yeah, it's yeah. very lotusy kind of to old Toyota 2000 GT, but still very cool. So where's the story behind this one? Story behind this one is um, a friend of ours that, that actually owned the Opel Garage in Wexford. There, so he's he's the owned this car and left it to him, you know, and he passed away. Yeah. So it's just, it's just up here for a couple of repairs. We're actually a radiator to go into it, and there's a couple of cables there to swing the front lights. They're seized. Yeah. So we're just waiting on bits for it really to get it back on the road from really. Yeah. Yeah. Opel kind of, Opel? 1995, I think, it was on the road. Yeah. 1995 yeah. was yeah. the last time it was on the road. Yeah. That's an incredibly cool car. Yeah. Yeah. So Very cool car, isn't it? Yes. What I love about it is that back in the day they would yeah, finish, and it's, they it's would finish a car and go, yeah. oh no, we've no space for that. I just bulged it up there on the bottom yeah, of the yeah. ground. You know, it was a kind of a very practical solution. Yeah, it's actually a fiberglass shell. Yeah, because there is no rust. Yeah, no, well, no rust. It's actually fiberglass. Yeah. Most of it's fiberglass, yeah. That's fiberglass. Yeah. Jeez, there's no steel in it at all. There's a bit there. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bit there. And what engine is it? It's just tiny. It's, a one, it's actually an old Opel engine, 1.9, I'm nearly sure now. Someone probably correct me, but I think it's a 1.9 Petra. This is where, and this is where the battery goes. The battery yeah. goes. What a strange place to put the battery yeah. at the front. Right in the, the front, so you're going to crash. You're going to crash straight battery. into the battery. Acid everywhere. Yeah. Opal yeah. taken out of the box there. <laughs> it's very cool. She didn't get to see one of those today. So fair play. That's really, really cool. Not on the road since 1995. This is a 32 GTR. Um, well, you could you could have revealed it. <laughs> but. This is a 32 GTR. This is your own car? Uh, no, it's actually the my girlfriend's car. We we forgot it to start the year. What is this? 1994. Last of 32 GTRs. Jeez, a 94. Just a set of wheels, really, and the interior. I mean, it's only like 100,000 pounds, man. It needs full, needs more service history. There's people in America now falling over here yeah. at the moment. These... Underneath the car is like brand new. 
It was never <laughs> snow or us, nothing on the stuff. Jeez, it's brand new. Mm. That's almost left me speechless because it's like I've walked into a Nissan museum and just said, oh, there's the, the ortho. Well, if you come down here, you're going to see more brand new. Jesus, I, I have never seen one in this. We've seen some really nice yeah, ones over like, the years, yeah, but, I but that's, like, I know you might see a bit marks here and there, but it's like it's never been restored. So every bolt has never been touched on like. See, what I'm trying to say is I've seen yeah. some 34s, GTRs, absolutely immaculate, but they've been restored. Yeah, exactly. So they've changed everything and they've kind of got rid of all the wear. Yeah. I've never seen one that no one's ever touched in this condition. God almighty, it is a brand new car. Like the boot of my super is dirtier than this. That's a year old. This car will, is, I'd say will, is going to be worth a fortune, is worth a fortune in this condition. But again, if you don't get one now, will you ever get one again? That's the thing because yeah, they're going to. You probably have to restore it. You probably have to restore it if you can afford it, or yeah. it's going to get to museum level where you're paying over 100 grand for one probably in five years' time, and it's going to be it's a lot to pay for one of these. But at the same time, yeah. like we saw how the 34 GTR went, yeah. it, it always and trickles it. down the line, you know. All right, guys. So we left uh, the first set of garages, and we're now following Richie and John to their home place, where they say they've got some more cars. So. I'm not going to refuse that, we're going to go check them out. We've had a great day so far and what I love about this video is we have absolutely no idea what we're about to see, just like you guys don't in this video. But before we get to their next shed, I want to talk to you guys about our Drift Games Bash, which is on the 3rd and 4th of December. We told you guys we're going big for the final big event in Irish car culture. We are going to bring James Dean, we're going to bring Jimmy Oakes, we're going to bring Becky Evans, the Shanahans. We'll be there releasing our brand new Drift Taxi Verosa and of course, for your driver or spectator, all the good stuff that you'd always expect from the bashes. Great party on the Saturday night, endless amounts of track time, three track layouts all the way through the day. It's going to be a wild event to finish off a crazy 2022. Tickets are on sale on Wednesday from 6 p.m. So make sure you grab them if you're a spectator or if you're a driver. They're going to go very, very quickly, so make sure you're on it. All right, so on to the next shed. Um, still no idea what we're going to see, but so far, we haven't been let down. There's some really cool cars in there. And I think what I love about these guys is their passion goes beyond Instagram or YouTube or any of that stuff. They're not too interested in showing it off. They just love working on it on the weekends and the evenings and having their friends around and basically exchanging ideas, which is really what car culture should be all about at, the, at its core. So I'm excited to see what else they got. So we are now at location number two. We also don't know what we're going to see inside here, but um, Feeling this because it's the personal guy. John's gonna give me a little nod. Because it's the personal yeah. garage, I feel this is where the, the tasty stuff. Oh, we have an 80. Oh, wow. Oh, lovely. That is how you Corolla. I love the, it's like old school stickers from back in the day. Yeah, they, they were on it when they bought it and they left them on it. It's so cool. So for you guys who don't know who watch our channel though, so MCN Sport, which is here on the side wing here, this is what Group D used to be. So Darren McNamara's old shop, which was mostly 86s, um, he's now Group D, but that's how old school that is. Mm. And then I noticed also MCN Sport here, and then Pro Drift, which is, we have to explain this to people who don't know these things. Back in the day, Pro Drift was the first Irish Drift Championship. So, well, it was kind of D1 IRL, but really it was Pro Drift before the Irish Drift Championship and all that. So this is very old school stuff. So what's the story with this car? It's obviously a white over black 86 with a very nice BN kit and very nice wheels. So this one, um, I bought this in 2009. 2009? Yes. How have you found um, this long? Um, I haven't done really anything with it. Cleaned up the paintwork on it. I mean, you got a BNK, you got what knobbies, your white over black. Yeah. Clean, smoke lenses. CBY Yeah, CBY wider, just TRD spoiler. It's like, it's like all the Corolla bits. Yeah. My style of what I like in Corolla yeah. is the kind of Japanese style. Yeah. It's really nice. And then we got a car trapped in a bubble. So, so this is the real deal, R33 GTR. Yeah. Please tell me you didn't buy this one super cheap before all the prices went mad. Uh, well, it is a lot cheaper than what you buy one now, Eric. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it's actually a very clean car. Um, there's a guy, there's only one owner before me, um, guy brought it in from the paperwork that I got with it. I got a massive amount of paperwork. 
every receipt that he spent on it. I assume it's, it's like, I'm assuming like the other 32 is just going to be an absolute mess and uh, just the hen's yeah. nest. And, uh, yeah, so the, the rare with the Xenon's in them. That's what I just said, the headlights to me were the strangest part. They're, they're worth big money now. So I hope I never break one. So it's running, just have just all, a few bits done. Yeah, it's running 4.20 break. I have the printouts now, it's running FC Commander, all kind of old stuff, but works like. See braided lines, you know, somebody spent some yes. money because braided lines. Braided are lines are not cheap. And these things are not cheap as well. Yep. The fittings. Josh and I never will recover financially from the fittings <laughs> on our two drift cars when we realised that. Yeah. I would throw in about 300 quid there for fittings and it was yeah. about three and a half grand for fittings. <laughs> but um, I like the way it's done. I mean, this is not, this is, this is painted, I assume? Yeah, it's painted. So yeah. it's painted green. And yeah. then it's like a nice bit of chrome in there. It's got the intake. Yeah. But it's Some all. It's a bit tired now, but. But like, you know what? It's, it's all scrambled. HKS, Apexy. It's all the right stuff. Right stuff yeah. Yeah. So it's like all, you know, Greddy. I don't know. I like when it's all kind of a theme like yeah, that. You either go all modern or you kind of go all, all old school yeah. and it's nice yeah. and old school. And like, it's clean inside. And you can see that even though there's a little bit of modification done, it's been done tidy and neat yeah. and all the vacuum lines and everything. It's really nice. Fuel rail. It's a nice looking car. Yeah. That, I would keep that in a bubble too. Yeah. So apparently, Josh and I haven't seen enough cars for the one day. We're going to go to another shed to see some more cars. This has been a fun day, Josh. Like, I have no idea where we're going, and every time we go into another shed, I just see something very cool. Like, I'm scared it's getting better and better. Yeah, I actually you know. I think this is, like, we, this is nice now. I, I think as a two car garage, number 33 GTR and an 86. Let us know in the comments which one would you pick if you, if you had to pick one. Let's say irrelevant to value. If you had to pick one just to go for a back, ro back road blast in, which would you take? Would you take the Corolla or would you take the GTR? Rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, lighter, more powerful. Let us know in the comments. Okay, so um, obviously because we're here and we're going to head off to the next place that we have to do some pops and bags of flames out of this Corolla. He said that it's a bit spicy, so we're going to go around the back. We're inside as well, so that's a great place to be listening to it. exaggerate the amount of flames out of that 16 valve Corolla. All right guys, we're off to our next location. It's the final location of the day. We've had an awesome time checking out all these cool JDM cars. Fair play to Richie and John for giving us the tour. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our partners here at Drift Games, Link ECU. You guys know I'm running Link ECU on my new Verosa build. I'm also running Link ECU on my S12 coming up. Obviously the drift cars run on Link ECU. Pretty much everything's going on Link ECU because it's the best in the business. I want to be able to control everything within the parameters on the car, get more performance, and also be able to plug in with my laptop and see what's going on with the car, if there's any issues, and saving a load of time running around with spanners trying to figure it out. As you can tell, Richie there said all the cars that he's restoring, he's putting them on a Link ECU as well because it replaces all the old Japanese stuff that's in the cars and all the mess of wiring and all the piggyback and plug-in stuff. So check out the full linkecu.com website. They've got an amazing range for almost all performance cars and I promise you, you won't regret it. All right, so we've come to what is, can only be described as a very nice aesthetic garage. I mean, not often in Ireland have we ever had the outside of a garage impress us, but this might be the nicest outside of a garage I've seen. So fair play, this is yours, John? Yes. It's lovely. Yeah. See that now? Stepping the game up outside of the garage looking as nice. If the, if the inside is as nice as the outside, I think we're in for a treat. So I can see that we have, I mean, my head is nearly overloaded on JDM cars today, but we've one outside. And then we have a few inside, but the one outside, let me see if I can guess it from here. Yeah. I'm going to best guess Honda Integra Type R. Yes. Am I right? Yes. 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 Get in there. <laughs> oh, a little, a little sausage dog. Right, focus, focus. I don't know. Dog or the, inte dog or the Integra? <laughs> dog reckons the dog. <laughs> so this is a... 96 spec uh, Type R dev. Um, very low mileage, only 99,000 kilometers in it. Wow. So okay. it's, yeah, it came into Ireland in 2006. It's been in the shed like then for 10 years. So I bought it in 2016. Like no, in general, like I, I know we got very used to them. I mean, they would have passed you and you wouldn't have paid any remarks because yeah, yeah. there's quite a lot in Ireland. Yeah. But now that you don't see them for a while yeah. and you consider this a 96 
Yeah. It still looks good for a 96. Yeah, bad, yeah. Maybe it even looks better now. Yeah. Maybe modern cars are getting so bad looking that I feel like these, was, <laughs> this was the pinnacle of how it looked. That's really nice. Yeah. We're gonna go, we're gonna go inside. I'm just, I'm just so curious about this garage because it's so oh. nice on the outside. <laughs> Is it as nice on the inside? I, you know what? There's probably a, a swimming pool in here. <laughs> No, oh, gee, back. well, this, yeah, okay. This was kept from us now, wasn't it? I didn't know we were going to see one of these, but I was only about to say it in the last garage going, that's mad because we've seen an R32 and an R33. Wouldn't it be mad if we saw an R34 in the same video? Yeah. And Obviously. In the perfect spec and colour. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, and you got a couch, so you, what you do is you sit here and you just go, you just sit here and go, there's my, there's, there's money being appreciated in front of me there. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. making money, basically. Just yeah. making, I just sit here looking at it, and yeah. it's making more money than if I went out the door and started working myself. Exactly. Yeah. This yeah. is a beautiful car. Yeah. So how, what's the story behind this one? Um, I bought this one in 2017. At the time it was a lot of money, but now considering it's like doubled what I paid for it, so. It's, it's justified so the garage, by the way. Yeah, so so the garage time. is now justified Happy with this. Time, you know? uh, oh, this is yeah. like, everyone who's, and we all went through a stage where we were, like, I think everyone who was into cars, not everyone, but yeah. people who were into trading cars and stuff, they probably had to think about it one night. Go on, go down, <laughs> yeah, go down and get that loan now, and I'll buy myself an R34 GTR. And said, do you know what? I'll have a think about it. Yeah. And then off they went to the moon, yeah. and they ain't coming back. So this was bought, 2017 is probably peak yeah. time, yeah. Yeah. and Bayside Blue. Yeah. With the yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we, we know about these now. We know all about Tour 34 GTRs yeah. because our Middle East travels have seen quite a few of them. Right. But we know like, this is yeah. this is how I would have an R34 GTR. This color, the Z tune, yeah. a little bit of carbon here and there. Yeah. It's lovely. And so is the spotless. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Just tucked away. Tibbles, tibbles with all their GTRs. And yeah, I suppose you get you got all three of them out together. It's like that must be like a, yeah, a cool, idea. cool idea to see them all together. That's yeah. amazing. We've one more to go. Yes. And no. I mean, where do we go from here? I think everyone's got their money's worth. Well, no one pays to watch these videos, but they got their money's worth watching so far. But there's one more car. It has to be old. I could probably make a guess at this one because I think I have something very similar. <laughs> 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 and, and all that gives it away is, is, yeah. is this. This is, so it's got a fender yes. mirror, so it's got to be 70s, 80s Japan. I'm going to assume it's a 240Z, and that would be like, you boys have like completed the... You start with Gran Turismo, and then you real life Gran Turismo. Can we have a look at it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. The one. This is the one we see. This, this is the one it's that the one, inspired this yours. Is the one that inspired my 240Z. Compared to mine, mine is a very different build. It's a V8. Yeah. It's kind of a resto mod. This one is like pretty much a restoration from yeah. start to finish. Oh my god, that is just another level. That is another level. So explain to me where this car came from because I know it didn't arrive into the shed like this. No. So basically, um, kind of looking them up, wanted one. And the minute I seen this one and walked into the shed, like it was, it was just, it was a rolling shell. The dash was in the boot. He had stripped it and put, put a bit of primer on it. And you could see the actual metal was good. Left the deposit. Then about a week later, I had the lorry ready to go for it. And we had made the deal. I made the deposit, had the money ready to pay him. Got a loan of lorry, had, had a boat booked. Was ready to go. Looked at the email, seven o'clock, backed out of sale. He didn't want to sell it that his sons was going to take it over and finish the project. About a week and a half later, got an email off. Said that he'd sell the car, uh, he's, but he'd have to get £5,000 more for it. 
So I, I emailed him back and I said that that wasn't part of the deal and all this kind of stuff and a bit of rigmarole went but I said Lev went me and think about it. So he wasn't backing down so I ended up giving him 5,000 more for it. Did she? Mm. But you're lucky I couldn't get one. Couldn't I get was one. about to say, you're not gonna, you know the classic, oh, I'm looking at two other ones tonight. Yeah. It doesn't exist with these, so so there's not enough of them. Went on from there and sure I kept spending money on it and he ended up fucking buying a 2.8 engine, the later engine forward, putting a diesel crankshaft in it. Racing pistons, racing Conrad's high lift camshaft. It just she kept got, going. She got out of hand. She, she got, got out of hand. hand. But it looks amazing. It's, look, it stands to it. It turned out more. But you know what, look, right? It turned out better than I ever thought. Like, to be honest, I saw this, I think it was in Waterford. And yeah. um, it was one of those moments where I walked by something and stopped without going, oh, there's a 24 z And I looked back because yeah. you had the bonnet open. And I was like, this is a brand new car like yeah. absolutely spotless and yeah. i can only imagine the amount of work because it's hard to get anything for them yeah um they're also finicky yeah. when you take something off it never really goes back no, on right. again you can tell that yeah. like it's all you know you open a screw i mean wayne was doing some of mine you open something and go well that's a one use screw like it's gone it's broken it's but this is like this might be the cleanest car you've shown us today, which is like, yeah. it's spotless. And you've got the BC Racing coilovers, which we did on ours, yeah. changes it completely. Oh, definitely, yeah. Standard suspension is horrendous. Yeah. And like, it's just very nicely well done. Did you have to retrim the seats or were the seats something yeah, you bought? No, the seats, I, the seats were um, all kind of torn and stuff. So I sent them down to um, placing Kenny there. And um, they refurbished them. Took eight months, like, but you've done a good job. This, is an, this has been a good day. We've seen a lot of nice cars today. You guys are very passionate about your build. Oh, I yeah. really am impressed. So it'd be rude not to get one little spin in the car before we finish off today. Thank you so much for showing us around. We've had an amazing day. We're gonna take some more B-roll and some photos of all this stuff because it looks crazy. And I can't believe I'm standing in a yard in Ireland beside an R34 GTR Bayside Blue and an absolutely perfectly restored 240Z, which is just mind blowing, which goes to show that these little hidden gems are everywhere in Ireland. So we really hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you to Richie and to John for showing us around. We've had an awesome time. They've been great hosts and I'm sure with all the stuff they're doing, we'll be back again sometime to check out what other madness they've come up with in the meantime. So if you liked this episode, if you want us to see more cool sheds around the country, let us know. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode.